Now, what is up my fellow prod coders? Welcome to this video. And today I'm going to explain how to build a session based authentication system with the Node.js Express.js framework and this Redis in memory store. Now, this video will be more on a conceptual level. So I'm first going to walk you through the flow of creating a session and maintaining a session. And we're going to talk about the reason why we need that. And then in a follow up video, I'm going to show you how to implement all of that. But either way, it's quite important to understand it on a conceptual level first. And now the first question you might have is what problems are sessions actually solving? Well, here's the thing. AGP is a stateless protocol. So that means you make a request to a server. The server is going to do some work. It's going to return you some data and then it's going to completely forget about you. So if you make a follow up request, then the server has no context whatsoever about you. And this is really, really bad because we don't want to identify ourselves every single time that we're making a follow up request to the server, right? This would be a huge waste of resource because then for every single follow up request, we would need to send our credentials, the server would need to check it, the server would need to check if you have the proper roles and so on and so on. And um, this is kind of an issue, especially if you have a lot of users. And that's why there is the concept of sessions. So a session is user data that is temporarily stored on the server side. And uh, well, it's actually user data of currently active users that would be more precise. And uh, we're storing some important things in our session, something like, I don't know, the roles or the privileges that you might have, um, your user ID or client ID or whatever, like your system has to identify that user. And uh, let's just take a look at this example flow here to probably understand what we're doing. So let's just say we have an application here, like a website. And in this application, we can log someone in. So the user will enter the email and the password, and then we're going to send this data to our server. And our server will now say, okay, someone is trying to log in. So I now need to check if that guy like entered the correct credentials. So we're going to reach out to some database, like some relational database or some NoSQL database. And we're going to fetch some information about this user. So we're going to uh, fetch some data and say, okay, does this user with this email even exist? Um, so we will fetch like, I don't know, the email, we're going to fetch the user's password hash and some other important information like roles, uh, privileges, um, preferred language uh, settings, these kind of things, you know? And um, one thing here to note is, we never store passwords in clear text in our database. Because if someone manages to get into your database, then you have a complete leak of all data. And that's why we're only going to store the password hash. Okay, so we are fetching the password hash, um, some user preferences like preferred language or whatever you might have in your application. And then once we have that, our server is going to hash the password the user sent and it's going to compare it to the hash in the database. And then if they match, then the user is successfully logged in because the user entered the correct uh, username and the correct password. And then we can create a session. And what this means is we are going to store some data in our session store. And this store can be literally anything. Like most of the time it's a fast in-memory store, something like Redis. And in here we are just, we just store some important information about that particular user. So for example, roles or uh, preferred language, uh, things like that. And once we stored uh, everything in here, we are going to get, a, or we will get back a session ID. And this session ID then belongs to the user that is currently logged in. And uh, we are going to attach this session ID um, to a cookie, which we're going to send back. And now the user is 
logged in and we can actually perform some follow-up requests. So as you can see, this entire flow here is the authentication flow. So authentication means I am logging someone in, right? So someone is in general logged into the system. Now authorization, we're going to talk about that in a second, is you might be like logged into the system, but you might not have all privileges in the system, right? If you're not admin, you're not allowed to do everything. And this is the difference between authentication and authorization. So just wanted to draw that line here because this question might come up um, later on. Okay, cool. So now let's just say we want to fetch some data and we want to fetch some user specific data. So some, something like profile information, first name, last name, uh, date of birth, uh, address, you know, like sensitive data that not everyone is supposed to see. And the way this works is our browser makes a request to the server and our server is going to read the session ID from the cookie. So our browser will always send the cookie along like to us back for every single follow-up request. This is basically what the cookie is designed for. And then we're going to read the session ID from the cookie and we're going to hit our session store and we're going to fish our session out of this database. And now you also know why you typically pick like a fast in-memory store, uh, simply because we need to fish out this session from our database and it is supposed to be fast, right? Because we want a fast uh, response time. Okay, so once we have the session out of our system, let's just assume uh, we have a session, then we can continue. If we don't find a session in our store, we will return an error. So that person is unauthorized. But if we have a session, then the next thing the server is going to do is, it's going to check if you have the required privileges to perform the action that you want to perform, right? Because you can be logged in, but you might not have all privileges. And if you don't have all privileges, then even though you're logged in, the server will return an error. And otherwise it's going to do the work or it's going to perform the operation. So it's probably going to fetch some data, like some profile information, address, first name, last name, these kind of things. And then it's going to return that data back to you and the browser can display this data. Yeah, so this is pretty much how sessions work. So you make a request, you log someone in, you store some data on the server side, and um, this data is then quickly retrieved for every single follow-up request. And like so, you don't have to do all this like work every single time uh, that a client makes a follow-up request because that would be a huge waste of resources. So that's more or less the general concept of sessions. And uh, now that it should be relatively clear like what we're talking about. So if you still have any questions, uh, please let me know in the comments. You can also uh, send me a message. Uh, my Twitter handle is at production coder. And uh, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And in the next video, we are going to talk about the actual implementation of all of this. See you then.